Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. So this is the second of a two-part video series um, where I'm discussing the earth energy imbalance. So basically, a very good peer-reviewed paper by the Global Climate Observing uh, Groups, uh, you know, looked at the sort of top of the atmosphere down you know, large uh, top-down analysis of how much energy the Earth is gaining, how much heat energy the Earth is gaining. The, basically, the incoming solar radiation as measured at the top of the atmosphere far exceeds the outgoing radiation by 358 times 10 to the 21st joules. That's the total heat gain between 1971 and 2018. Of this total heat gain, 89% has gone into the oceans, 4% into the cryosphere to melt the ice and snow, 6% to heat up the land, talking about heating up the soils and the permafrost, and only 1% is heating up the atmosphere. And we can see that the damage that that 1% is doing in terms of disrupting our weather patterns, in terms of uh, causing extreme weather events ranging from droughts to torrential rains causing floods and, you know, the total disruption of our crops and, you know, our, our lives, you know, um, basically all of this is happening with only 1% of the, of the heat that the Earth has gained, the 1% that the atmosphere has gained. If you take the overall uh, gain of heat, 358 zeta joules, so that's 358 times 10 to the 21 joules, if you take that and divide by the number of seconds between 1971 and 2018, and also divide it by the surface area of the Earth in square meters, that gives you 0 0.47 watts per square meter is the average energy imbalance of the planet. But if you, and that's between 1971 and 2018, if you just look at 2010 to 2018, that number is 0 0.87 watts per square meter. The energy imbalance is greatly accelerating. This is, we're under abrupt climate change. Our planet is rapidly changing and things just cannot keep up to this sort of change which is unprecedented in in the history of the earth essentially so i'm going to continue um, where i left off so this is the key image which i showed in the last video um, how we have the total heat gain which because the incoming exceeds the outgoing and of that heat gain 89 percent in the oceans 6% is heating up the land, 4% is, is going into the cryosphere, melting the ice, the sea ice, the glaciers on land and the glaciers on mountains, and only 1% is heating up the atmosphere. And that 1% heating up the atmosphere has caused a temperature rise of about 1.1 degrees Celsius if you relate it to, uh, you know, 19, or 1880 to 1910 baseline. But if you go back to 1750, add point three, so that's more like 1.4 degrees Celsius increase in the atmosphere, the lower atmosphere, because of that 1% of the heat of the total heat gain of the Earth is heating up the atmosphere. Okay, um, and uh, this is a paper, you know, for all the details. Just Google it, heat stored in the Earth system, where does the energy go? It was just published, peer reviewed and published. Huge array of authors, almost 30 authors, or 30 different institutions, huge numbers of authors. Okay, um, and this is where I left off. Um, before is the heat. Okay, so this is the heat gain in the ocean, zero to 700 meters. This is uh, 700 to 2,000 meters, below 2,000 meters. So you can see more heat's going into the surface layers, but there is heat penetrating down to below 2,000 meters, which is 6,600 feet depth. 
This is the heating up of the land. This is the heating up of the ice, the melting of the ice. And this is the heating up of the atmosphere. Look how small that is, that atmospheric component. And yet that's driving climate change as humans know it for the most part, as we experience it. This is the top of the atmosphere as measured, which is a, a separate measurement. So you can add all these up and you can see very good agreement with these numbers here. Um, this is the uncertainty between these dashed black lines. Okay, so we're, we're, uh, it's, it's incredible how we're changing. We completely change the dynamics of the earth and we're doing so at ever increasing rates. This is the, um, the earth energy imbalance numbers from different studies that have been done throughout the years, all these different studies. I want to just focus here on um, the uh, Global Climate Observing System, Earth Heat Inventory. So from 1971 to 2018, 0.47 watts per square meter. From 2010 to 2018, that number is 0 0.87. From 93 to 2018, 0.69. So clearly, you know, as we move forward in time, the heating rate of the Earth is ever accelerating. Okay, this is going to end very badly. There was a study that looked between 2000 and 2014 and came up with a number of 1.1, even larger, wild. I'll have a quick look at that paper for you. Okay, so this is, uh, this is crazy stuff. And again, here we have the, the heat imbalance. And in order to balance out, so between 2010 and 2018, we have a 0 0.87 watts per square meter imbalance. In order to null that, in order to bring that to zero, we'd have to reduce current atmospheric CO2 by about 57 parts per million. So this is the priority for Earth, for us to survive on this planet, restore a stable climate. We need to reduce CO2 in the atmosphere. To buy us time, we, we would need to do solar radiation management procedures, deployments, okay? Otherwise, you know, we're not going to be able to grow food and all hell's going to break loose on, on this planet, which is already happening. If you remember my poster, all hell is going to break loose. That's happening. Now, the wild paper here, okay, if we go back to here, Okay, this is the wild 2020 paper where it actually, instead of 0 0.87 watts per square meter imbalance, it was 1.1. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at some of the things in that paper here. Okay, so you can just Google the global energy balance is represented in the CMIP 6 climate models. These are the most recent runs of climate models. This data will go in the next IPCC report. And just to look at some of the highlights, first of all, there's a lot of details that go into these numbers. So there's top of the atmosphere, energy balance component. This is shortwave radiation. So this is incoming solar radiation from the sun, shortwave radiation going down at the top of the atmosphere. And the numbers, 340.2 watts per square meter. That's the mean for CMIP-6 and the error standard deviation. Um, some of that is reflected upwards, about a third of it is reflected upwards, so short wave upwards, all sky, all sky being, you know, clear skies and cloudy skies, but a, about a third of it gets reflected up. The albedo of the Earth from space is about 30% or so, the re average reflectance. Um, this is, some of it is absorbed and, uh, you know, these are, this is the long wave radiation. The heat basically radiating up. Okay, so all of these different numbers are there for the top of the atmosphere, different components of the atmosphere, and what happens at the surface. Okay, it's sort of like the energy budget. I'll show some images. But first of all, these are all these different um, models. There's 37 individual CMIP models, and these are the. Uh, this is the value of the. Uh, the, the global annual mean incoming shortwave radiation at the top of the atmosphere for the different models. So you can see the variance. You can get a mean and a variance. Um, 
There's some other, this is total absorption at the top of the sky, uh, all sky absorption, short wave absorption. There's all kinds of uh, short, you know, surface down, downward short wave, long wave, you know, all kinds of different uh, plots comparing the different models. The net result is the imbalance at the top of the atmosphere from all of the mean of all these CMIP6 models is 1.1, okay, uh, watts per square meter. Okay, and that's the, where that number came from for this paper. Okay, the, the CMO, the, the, um, okay, that's for this paper, the WILD paper. And it, just to refresh your memories, um, that's this paper here, the 1.1, but the G Global Climate Observing System, the peer-reviewed paper uh, that I discussed first, you know, has a 0 0.87 number for 2010 to 2018. Okay, um, so that's probably the most accurate number that we can look at. Um, and also, uh, you know, this is sort of a number where you, where you get these numbers from. So this is all sky when there's clouds and then there's clear sky. So we've got the top of the atmosphere. We've got the incoming solar radiation at the top of the atmosphere. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, these are the sort of numbers here, okay, that we get. And if you can, you can get the basic, uh, you know, there's CMIP5 numbers, CMIP6 numbers, numbers from various papers. Okay, that's the four different uh, numbers. They're all in the, in the, you know, roughly in the same, same ballpark, right? So this is incoming. Some of it is absorbed in the atmosphere. It's absorbed by the molecules in the atmosphere, the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. That causes the heating of the lower atmosphere. Some of it is just reflected. It's reflected from molecules in the atmosphere. It's reflected from, um, from aerosols in the atmosphere, for example, sulfur dioxide uh, forming hydro sulfuric acid. Okay, so if we see the upper atmosphere with... Uh, with uh, sulfur dioxide, then we could increase this reflectivity. So this is solar reflected energy at the top of the atmosphere. And then some of this reflected up gets scattered down. This is the solar radiation, the long wave, short wave radiation from the sun that gets down. And then uh, a lot, most of it is absorbed in the surface. Some of it is reflected back up. Okay, and it causes an and, and then what we have is we have, so we have the clouds here reflecting some of the light. Um, we have, and then we're heating, because we've heated the surface of the earth, we get the, the heat, the long wave radiation or thermal radiation comes up here. So this comes up, some of it is, goes right through an atmospheric window, right up into space. Other, other parts of it have to penetrate clouds, etc. Okay, so a certain fraction, a large chunk of it goes out back into space at the top of the atmosphere, but the greenhouse gases, they absorb this uh, thermal radiation, okay? They absorb this uh, radiation and, ref re and, and keep it in the Earth's system. So they ref it comes back down and it heats up, it doesn't escape the system. And this is causing the, the warming that we see. There's also evaporation of the oceans, there's evaporation of water, there's transpiration from the plant. This water vapor goes up and carries heat. And this is a sensible, so this is latent heat here in this component. And there's also sensible heat because of the, the temperature of the surface is increased, it radiates uh, radiation back out. So you can get this total sort of situation and the net result from this, what is coming in exceeds what is going out. So this is what is coming in, the incoming solar shortwave radiation, and this is what is going out, okay? Um, the, the short wave and the long wave, and the net imbalance is 1.1, um, okay? Is, that's the average of all the CMIP6 models. It was 1.2 in the previous slew of models, the CMIP-5 models. Okay, there's, there's other numbers, but we're converging to, you know, th these numbers are the most recent numbers 
you know, there was more error in the previous numbers. Okay, you can do the same sort of balance without clouds. Okay, and so you have the two different situations. 